What's up guys? So today I thought I'd go through and show you a few tips for socializing your snakes. Now, this is definitely something that's really important, especially when they get up to about this size because it just makes snake keeping a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable when your snakes aren't, you know, super defensive all the time and uh, trying to bite you. Now, starting off with the blood pythons here, uh, they're actually a lot more shy. You know, people say they're mean, but really they're quite shy and they're just usually not afraid to defend themselves, which can come off as mean. But you can see my girl Rhonda here. She's you know, a little timid, maybe doesn't want me to mess with her, but perfectly sweet and manageable. And this is the goal for socializing your animals. Of course, it starts when they're small. Here we have sort of a mid-size girl, ivory, had T positive blood. You can see she's a little timid as well, but when you're working with a snake like this, especially blood pythons, Oops, now I'm still in the water. They like to be supported. They don't really like to be kind of poked or messed with. No, you can't give in to the bluffs. You can't give in to the hissing. It's just part of it. But if you're confident and you don't provoke them, and gradually over time, you're gonna make progress. You wanna keep them supported. You don't wanna keep them too far off the ground. They get very uneasy about not having their footing. But basically what you wanna do is, you know, when you're servicing the cage, when you're going through, checking things out, Take them out for a few minutes and this is not something you want to do when you just get your snake. If you just got it in the mail, you know, you want to wait a few weeks, make sure they're feeding consistently and then you can start trying to work with them. And a lot of times just going through the motions, just going through the routines, takes for them to get used to you over time and you'll start to see that progress now, now a lot of times the bigger snakes will have more confidence and will lend themselves better to being handled this girl is normally quite good actually despite being smaller she is going into shed as well. Usually if you're working on socializing your snake, you don't want to mess with them when they're in shed, but this girl's doing quite well. You don't want to do things that trigger the snake. If I'm going like this, she's probably going to try to bite me. She's going, you know, what are you doing? What's that? Where are you coming from? You don't want to get in their face. nice short interactions and you don't want to overdo it you want to have a good experience and if it's going well you want to end while it's going well so just like that it didn't seem like much but you know she didn't bite she didn't even try to bite that's a good experience she goes back in her house, she realizes, you know, that was okay. And then we can move on to the next one now. This is the snake that likes being handled the least. Basically, she trusts me the least. But 
Uh, you can see she's kind of cocked up right now. She's looking at me, looking at the camera. You don't usually want to film when you're socializing. It Definitely with these blood pythons especially, it makes them uneasy. Something like this, you know, they don't usually bite the hand that's holding them. You can usually get their attention focused on something else. And you just want to hold them. Again, we're not triggering, we're not waving in front of the face, we're not jerking or getting intimidated by anything. And with a snake that doesn't want to be held, you don't want to hold it too much, like I'm saying. So here we go, another good interaction, no biting. I'm not gonna get my hand in her face when I come out. And she's gonna go right back in. That little blood spot is obviously from the last rat she ate. Now, moving on to the ball pythons. So another thing, when you're going into the enclosure, okay, if you're very timid, you know, and you, don't know where to reach, you don't know what to do, the snake's getting uneasy because it also doesn't know what you wanna do. So you don't wanna be aggressive, but you don't wanna be fearful. You wanna come from behind the snake, don't stick your hand in front of its face, come from behind the animal, pick it up nicely, keep it angled away from you, you know? You want to do everything that will not provoke a defensive or fearful response. You don't want to bop it in the face. You don't want to get in front of its face. If I go like this, she's going to want to bite me. If I come from here underneath, she's not. And a lot of the times, so a baby snake, it can only bite if it's, you know, a snake will only bite if it first is able to get into that recoiled position. So a lot of times what I'll do is sort of just get them out of that mode. You know, a baby ball python, it's either going to S up, it's going to tense up to bite, or it's going to duck its head to curl up. And you want to prevent that. So I'll kind of being completely gentle here, I'll kind of get them into this, into a more elongated pose. And she's not gonna think about biting as much from that point. And then you'll see the tongue starts flicking. I'll even do a little bit of touch here. Because if you're tense and you're just sitting here, you know, she doesn't know what's going on just some light touching, you know, can kind of encourage that forward movement. And that forward movement is the opposite of, you know, the strike position. That's how you get them into that thinking mode. So, very sweet little banana head clown female. And let's try one more. Let's see if we can find someone who needs it. Super banana clown. Again, when you go in, don't be hesitant, but don't be aggressive. Pick them up from the back. Oops. That's what you don't want to do. You don't want to accidentally bop them in the head. All right, so he's going for my hand like that come from underneath and see you can feel this tension that snake is uneasy right so that's where you know keeping them in the forward moving position as well as a little bit of light touch can gradually work them out of that tense strike mode see this guy is so intelligent he's already he's already getting out of that mood he's already starting to crawl around and 
explore. So yeah, you want short, simple interactions. You don't want to overdo this. You don't want to do it at all when you first get your snake. Just remember, a healthy snake should live, you know, especially a ball python should live at least 30 or 40 years, maybe even more with you. So you have all the time in the world. You don't need to rush things. And this is one of the joys of snake keeping is working with little snakes that are afraid everything's gonna eat them and uh, utilizing that brain to build a relationship with them instead, so. Let me know if uh, there's anything else, you know, I can show you guys or if there's anything I can cover more in depth here. Just a short video, but uh, thanks for watching and I hope this helps.